Hello there. I am here today to talk to you about one of my very favorite nonfiction books that I had to read when I was a Spanish major in graduate school. It was about Argentina, and it was all about the reign of terror, the bloody reign of terror of the 19th century leader of Argentina at that time, Juan Manuel Rosas. It's called Facundo, Civilization and Barbarism, and it was published in 1845 by uh, Domingo Faustino Sarmiento, who ironically, after Rosas was gone, was the president of Argentina from 1868 to 1874. You see, that's the interesting thing about Latin American literature. I don't think we have a single president of the United States who was a literary author other than just publishing his own autobiography. But we have this man, Domingo Faustino Sarmiento, who wrote this work that we're going to talk about today. And then we also have the president of Venezuela. He wasn't the president long. It was, I think, from February of 1948 to November of 1948, Romulo Gallegos, who wrote a very famous Venezuelan novel, Doña Barbara. So I find that interesting. I mean, name one president in our country that was a literary giant. So anyway, I absolutely love this essay. They called it an essay, which I found ironic since it had to do with literature, but Evidently, an essay is a genre of literature. And I think what I really liked about this essay, it was nonfiction, but it read like a novel because it had characters. It had Facundo, the military chief that we've talked about. It had Juan Manuel Rosas, the evil dictator. And then it had various other Folks, it had like gauchos, you may know a gaucho as a South American cowboy or a South American rancher. And then it had people who were trailblazers. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say trailblazers as much as I should say trail trackers. They called them rastreadores. And a rastreador, well, rastreador, it comes from the word rastro, which means trail. So they had these men. I don't know if some of them may have been gauchos. They worked to get the enemy for people like Rosas and for Facundo. They knew every single leaf, every tree, every river, <laughs> every uh, draw. I guess by draw, I mean like uh, dried up riverbed. They knew everything. I mean, the topography. And there actually were people in this story that we talk about who knew topography like the back of their hand. So I guess in all fairness, the, the, the book did talk about topographers who just had the land down. Absolutely. And then there were the trail, the trail uh, trackers, the rastreadores. But it was just so funny when they talked about these rastreadores. They were like bloodhounds. That's pretty much how they described them. <laughs> and when they finally found the enemy, that evil finger, that, well, maybe not the evil finger, the finger, like just, you know, getting them, it, <laughs> it was there. You know, I mean, they, they would find that person. I think the book mentioned that, that the, what's the word I'm looking for? The uh, indicting finger was there when they found the person. So yeah, and this book, it had like a map in the front and the back. And I, it, it, it was just so much detail. It had all the rivers. It was just fascinating. I'm glad that they had a map in the front and the back because as I read the story all about everything that happened, it helped me a great deal to be able to refer to that map. So I've written a few notes here just to kind of help me. So let's see here. So Facundo, he finally does die. Well, he was assassinated, let's put it that way. Everybody hated him. 
and actually it's very interesting in this book they talk about how you looked in his eyes his dark dark eyes you could see the cold and the evil I don't know if this is a little bit more for dramatic effect I mean <laughs> I wasn't alive then obviously in the 19th century and anybody who was alive then is gone but they said he had dark cold eyes you looked at him there was hardly any bit of a soul and they also talked about if he was in a bar like enjoying drinks laughing yucking it up you know if he came into contact with somebody some people were just scared to death like he just sent a, a, a chill down their bones down their spine I mean he just terror absolute terror even just you know interacting with him in a social setting so yeah I, I mean I guess people didn't have as much contact with the president of Argentina Rosas as they, they did with Facundo so maybe now that I think about it while I'm talking to you that may have a lot to do with why the whole essay was named after Facundo and not after Rosas but he was eventually assassinated and he knew that there were people waiting in ambush for him but he just thought he had so much charisma he thought he could talk his way out of it and when his coach was stopped and you know there were people with their arms drawn he wasn't scared at all from the accounts that I've read he thought that he could just speak to the people who were stopping his coach and you know be able to go on and you know I mean he, had, he was like an icon in a way but bad decision I mean they shot him on the spot and that was the end of it and you know since we're talking about Rosas in general Rosas was eventually exiled from Argentina people saw him for who he was and uh, he was very lucky that England wanted him I think he had some friends in England and he was over there I think he was about 60 years old when he kind of moved to England it's not interesting of all places in the world where he could go an Argentinian ex-president went to England but he, he went there when he was around 60 and he was there till he was about 84 years old and he did different things there but one of his biggest things he was a farmer and from what I read about him he was still a very handsome man even as he got older and he lived he didn't live he was he wasn't living high off the hog but he was able to kind of hold his own you know he kind of had a kind of a modest lifestyle but he wasn't poor and I don't know how much longer he would have lived I mean the reason why he died around 83 84 was because he went out for a walk one day and he just caught pneumonia so that's what happened to him but think about that uh, you know what happened with Pinochet in Chile Pinochet who was a dictator for many years down there he didn't have quite as a happy ending I think he was incarcerated and put on trial and I don't think he was ever convicted but Manu uh, Juan Manuel Rosas just he didn't really hold a candle to Pinochet with having to regret what he did so let's see what else could I tell you oh yes yes uh, so I didn't mention this this is a very colorful essay one thing I really enjoyed there was one passage about a tiger I believe it was a tiger that was kind of lurking looking for someone and they just went into great detail about the tiger and I think they were trying to make a parallel between the tiger and the cruelty of Rosas and the cruelty of Facundo Quiroga just how bloodthirsty these two were how cruel how they were always waiting in ambush they were ready to kind of get rid of any enemy whatsoever but yeah I mean I haven't read it for a while but I probably read it at least two or three times this whole commentary is just a cursory commentary I may do another video but for now I just wanted to give you one since I love this book so much just a cursory commentary but yeah that whole description about the tiger in the tree just in ambush 
waiting to pounce on its victim. That was one of the things I really loved about this book, other than the details about the rastreador, the gauchos, the people who were in charge of the topography, of the land, and then Rosas and Quiroga, uh, uh, Facundo Quiroga. I, I really enjoyed that one passage that had to do with the tiger and the tree. And I think you might too. So, I mean, if I, if I could pick like one thing in particular that really meant the most to me, why I love this book so much. As an undergraduate Spanish major, I was attracted to Spanish because of the language and the culture. When I went to graduate school, all it was was just literature. There was nothing else that you can specialize in. Now, I think things have changed now and graduate students can study other things like linguistics and maybe even culture. But back then, it was literature or nothing. So this book was just wonderful. Although it was literature, it had so much of these other things that I've been sharing with you right now. And it was nonfiction, as I said. So basically, I wanted to share with you my enthusiasm about Facundo, Civilizazioni Barbarie, and I hope that maybe someday you might be interested in reading it. I'm sure there are English versions out there somewhere. I didn't really check that out, but it's a very popular work of uh, Sarmiento, so I'm sure you could find it somewhere. So anyway, thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed what I had to say about this really fascinating work in Argentinian literature.